What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to lesson number 39 of Angels and Water Wings. So this is A Course in Creativity, inspired by A Course in Miracles, of the same lesson number in their workbook. Um, and the lesson in A Course in Miracles is my holiness is my salvation. Now, one of the things I really like about A Course in Miracles for the way that it does this, we'll get back to the creativity aspect in a second, but just a footnote, is it kind of breaks this sort of religious templating that might cause us to spend a lifetime projecting blame and guilt inward. Now, what does this mean? Well, there's a lot of verbiage that ties to Judeo-Christian mythos that is uh, sort of uh, breaking from this tradition of like, you know, you're born bad. You know, you're born bad, which is the furthest thing from the truth. Um, and a lot of this idea is is tied up in guilt and the idea of sin. So when language, a lot of people have struggles with A Course in Miracles because of the dense religious language in it. But I think it's a beautiful break when we look at it from a place of, of breaking apart religious templating that would have us spend a lifetime separate from one another or believing, believing in anything other than the oneness that connects us all. And the fact that when we're in that place, it becomes really hard to do harm because because we're not fighting for the for the banality of beliefs we have a connection to something much broader and deeper than that right because um, a lot of the time if someone disagrees we have to fight we have to argue we have to engage in a way that isn't really honoring the fact that we are one regardless of what those beliefs might layer over top in terms of templating some of the language that you'll see uh, that is included in this particular lesson is you know my salvation what does my salvation mean salvation in this particular lesson means means um, really just understanding that there's you're not guilty right you're not guilty salvation is forgiveness salvation is forgiveness and understanding that there was never anything you needed to forgive in the first place isn't that what forgiveness is that perspective shift when we return to it forgiveness is the idea that there's nothing that we have to forgive because nothing was really done and it was our perception what are you making your what are you making your saving grace what is it that you've placed on that pedestal what is it that you've elevated above yourself and said that will save me you know that will be my thing that will be what helps me that will be what what saves me what gives me all of this energy what does all of this stuff because we do it not just with people we do it not just with teachers we do it not just with teachings we do it with so many other things in a day and that's where we just become a sieve our power just we always we constantly give it away right well they said this about that and that because they have this expertise in this area it means that they no it doesn't actually it doesn't when we're talking about clinical things and doctors and medical stuff, I have a different opinion of that, but I mean like it's it's slightly different when someone just makes a blanket statement uh, that's very judgmental and harsh. And I think that's the big thing about this reaction that we have initially to things, right? This reaction is the thing that we, we need to watch. And when it comes to our salvation, we it, being aware and in the present moment is what will bring us back to it. It's what will bring us back to it. It's where we can see that um, we we are and have been the thing that we are reacting most strongly to, right? We've had strong opinions. We've had strong opinions and used four letter words that, you know, it just, and we've done these things and most of us have. So when we have strong reactions to those things, it is your light that is the returning, this sort of return, right? This return to your awareness, this bringing back to your heart center, this coming back to the present moment to be aware and say, you know what? Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen that and done that too. And honestly, if I'm being completely honest, I know what it's like to feel like you have to defend a belief. Like it's the last thing that you have. Like it's the last last breath you're taking, right? Because, because you hold so strongly to it. Because your idea of what saves you here is, is so far removed from your heart space. This need to react. Um, rather than respond, right? And this is where Louise Hay takes, talks about taking responsibility, response dash ability. So many people throw it around as a way to um, emasculate men and as a way to take away from power and to really, they use it in, as an accusatory, like directed way. And I find it so interesting because it's your ability to respond. How effectively are you standing in that? And, and you see as well in your ability to respond, you see that when you take a look and take stock, not from a place of hustle culture or doing to win approval or doing in general, but being, and you pull back and sit in the beingness of it and you say, okay, so my ability to respond, where is that? And how is that doing? How is that doing, right? How is that doing? 
in response to and in concert with my being. How is all of this talking across and building that bridge? How is all of that happening? A Course in Miracles also talks about atonement. So atonement is the realization that sin doesn't it's not applicable the way that we may have been sold <laughs> for our lifetime, right? And if you think about it, a lot of it is based on a moral relativism that is applicable to specific eras, right? If we were to look at one of the things that uh, I had to work through as, uh, you know, coming out as, as queer in the church way back was all of these clobber passages that people would throw at you uh, when you were, you know, outside of the templating that they said where you needed to be like, what, they're, just the, the <laughs> anyways, you needed to be like within their narrow purview of heteronormativity and cis normativity and you know all of this stuff so one of the things that I found very interesting and that I found comfort in um, was the you know people often quoted the Levitical laws uh, of you know Leviticus as like passages to justify the way things are with you what a way it should be but they would pick and choose <laughs> so it'd be like cherry picking your way to create this discursive structure uh, and system that would then bring things to life in a way that made sense for that particular person or group um, and I think about the, the moral relativism here, right? Like what is right and wrong changes uh, per the era that we're living in. And there are certain things that I still believe that we should not do, like harm other people, broadly speaking, all of the ways that that can come into play. This isn't to say, to take an absolutist turn towards anything I'm saying, because then that defeats the purpose too, because this is a both and world that we live in. Um, but this is just to illuminate the process of atonement, right? What does atonement mean in terms of A Course in Miracles? And then how does this apply to creativity? Well, when we're talking about atonement and creativity, your creative power comes from your understanding and, and how free you are. How free are you when you remember that you didn't come here bad? That you didn't come here to spend a lifetime atoning for something that you didn't do? To spend a lifetime trying to prove your goodness through a series of you know structures or systems and applying yourself to them well enough so that the applause comes and then you can take this idea of worthiness with you That's, the atonement for me was about breaking from that tradition and breaking from that tradition in the sense that this is a system that we've inherited but we've inherited a lot of other systems too have they worked not really. I talked to one of my good friends yesterday and um, we talked and they were in tears talking to me about the news, like the headlines about inflation and markets and how terrifying that is. And it is. It is if you're if if you're attached to the outcome of that. And what I mean when I say that, well, I mean, if you are building your whole view around things being OK based on things happening outside of you then that will feel so unsteady that it will knock you completely off base. And I'm not saying don't transmute the emotion, don't feel fearful. There's nothing wrong with feeling. But this is stepping back to remember that tomorrow something could happen that changes everything that makes it way better. Tomorrow you could have a perspective shift that, that shifts everything for you. So that the way that you were feeling now and the beliefs that this moment, this state might have reinforced for you prove to be completely different so it's not about adhering like it's not about sticking to things and connecting ourselves to a specific experience or belief when we are in a state when we're in an emotional state um this is really about pulling back to see the bigger picture right and to understand that this idea this dance that we do with atonement and salvation why do we think we need forgiving and why do we think we were we came here bad why do we think that we came here not worthy? What is it about that? And how do we understand how to save ourselves? This dance, right? How do we understand how to save ourselves? If you are believing that you need saving, if you are believing that you need anything outside of you, I mean, generally speaking, we need things outside of us, right? Water, air, <laughs> like we do. Um, but in each moment, wherever you are, you have so much knowledge that you can draw from you have people that you can draw on if you need right this doesn't always feel safe for people and i get that especially folks uh, who are part of equity seeking groups who at different turns in the in in time our worlds get a lot smaller depending on election cycles depending on all these different things these are all circumstances outside our control so i'm, I'm not paying any disrespect to those but i am saying that when we go within we have more than what we realize we have more knowledge and experience than we realize and this is it kind of pulls on this um 
one of the rules of improv uh, is is yes and right I've had one of my friends uh, his parents were heavily into improv so going over to their house for dinners was always fantastic you know saying to his dad oh how art thou and him being like I'm well and ye right those kinds of responses and, and it's just this yes and yes and both and yes and that life is kind of like that like it's it's improv it's we're making shit up as we go along and I feel like we forget, we forget that there's so much power and freedom in that and that it's not a process that we need to be saved from because that is the creative process in general, you know, and it's sort of splitting with this understanding or view of the world that says you need to have all of these specific feelings when you're, when you're upset or stressed and you need to feel this degree of shame in order to get this specific help. You need this degree of, you know, and it's, it's such a weird system to me because we always have more than we know and we always have more available than we might think and this isn't about and this is so this isn't about casting aside um you know the emotions that can come into play but this is about really stepping into the knowing that um, we have more than we think and what we think about that is so crucial um, because this is our light connecting to that understanding this isn't just about personal power this is about remembering that you didn't come here to spend a life trying to prove that you're not guilty we live it but the system and culture that we live in do uphold this so much and they reward us for ways that we prove our good that we prove how awesome we are that we prove all of these things and it's just not true so we have everything we need and then we need to ask ourselves you know in this I, louise hayes book i keep referencing it because when i was younger uh, you can heal your life was i think i read that when i was uh, 15 or 16 and it was a huge book for me i've i've read it so much and relied on it so much growing up to help pull me out of really awful circumstances and situations here and then understand how to move forward um, but one thing she talks about is um, you know that you, you removing things like I can't from your vocabulary because it's it's more um, helpful to say you know right now I'm trying to right now I'm cutting back on sushi um, significantly just for different health reasons and um, I think I talked about this in another video I'm not to be like I'm so hard done to it's so dramatic and ridiculous but this is really about um, looking at like, I can't go. Well, no, I don't want to because I have all these other priorities. And it seems like such a, a um, it seems like such a basic thing. But I think that if you look out into the world, this is something I talked about a little bit with that friend yesterday, right? Um, well, I can't do this because of the price of gas. I can't do this because of the price of groceries. I can't do that. But what can you do? Tell me what you can do. Those, th these are the things that are your salvation, right? This is the remembrance that you're not anchored in a world that is rooted in your guilt and blame and, and the way that you are at fault. No, you did not come here to, to, to focus on your can't, right? Are gas prices high? Yeah. Is inflation scary? Yes right? You know, it, it, all of these different things come together that are well outside of our control right now. So what do we do? Well, one of the things that I look at through this lesson is, you know, salvation is remembering who you are independent of everything happening around you. You know, that's a bold statement to make, I realize, because a lot of people, you know, have a lot of things riding on markets and things like that. Um, but we know the system wasn't working for everyone, right? We know that system wasn't working for everyone. So, how is it that we are working with these situations and uh, seeing them as, as for something bigger, for us potentially, right? We have to release this can't. We have to release the, the confines. I almost see it as like this suit that we're wearing that like clings to our person that we have to like pull up piece by piece to understand, right? I can't do that because of gas. Well, for example, uh, say if someone says, uh, I can't go on a hike that's an hour away now because it is, this is to use an example, like there's so many trails around me, but um, I can't do that because it's it's so far away and gas is too expensive. Okay, well, there are so many different trails that are around me that I haven't seen yet. And how can I be excited for those things, right? This is about state management, 
state management internally so that you can then see so that you can see not not the abundance of Kant because Kant is everywhere that was well before markets that was well before gas prices that was well before the war that was well before all of these things Kant's were everywhere and I can tell you I know because I had door after door slammed in my face when I was younger when I was in my teens and in my 20s right but I focused on the can what can I do what can I do to 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 shine my light to live in my light because that's the only way that you can survive anything you have to look and start with what you can do because when you're looking at that and you're focused in that energy what can you do then you're focused on the energy of possibility you're looking for the opportunities this is cognitive bias right when you see when you're tunneled into this specific place you're not going to see opportunity that exists outside of here if you're on can't 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 i can't do this that won't work it shouldn't happen i can't do that and pff, no way in hell right but the 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 ways in heaven <laughs> so to, to use a you know um turnabout's fair play i suppose like on the outside of that what what then you won't you will not recognize those as opportunities because you will be in Kant and say well that's not that's scary right i the activism that i've done in the past has focused so heavily on community right and um you know activists that i've organized alongside at the start of the pandemic they had care groups where they had people posting what they needed and they would get people together in community in this in my hometown and they would share resources and do drop-offs for people who were the most at risk so you know that's a can that's a huge can I feel like that's something that maybe we're being called to turn more towards is one another, to community, to 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 the oneness that connects us as opposed to the can'ts that make it so that you don't even know who your neighbors are anymore. And that's, you know, that's not the broad statement of this particular lesson, but just in general, right? What about what about potlucks in the community? What about different ways that we've, you know, we live in entirely different universes, yes, in embodied universes separate from one another. But what about the ways that we can come together that defy the cannot, that defy the couldn't and shouldn't? And when it comes to salvation, when it comes to things that, when it comes to being reminded of our light, our light comes to life with and through other people. Our light comes to life in those situations. So it's not about this can't happen, this shouldn't happen. You know, we all have moments where we wobble and stumble and yes, absolutely, that's okay, right? There's nothing maligning that at all. That is absolutely okay. Because when we have those reactions, when we have those initial reactions of fear and tears and worry, right? It is less about pushing them away because they're inconvenient and it is more letting them flow because those emotions are telling you something about the thoughts that you're having. Why? Because there's so much meaning that you've made within them. There's so much meaning that you've associated with those things. So, you know, one of the things that we were talking about was, um, how it feels like it's just like a hamster wheel with job stuff. It doesn't matter how much you work or how hard you work. It just feels like uh, nothing's going to be enough because gas prices and groceries up, 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 right? The price of them went up. Um, so, you know, and it, it's if you look at the news, that's all that you see really is is this because it is it's newsworthy, right? Um, in terms of how news values work, there are many ways that's actually a thing. News values, it's sort of like um, the, the uh, news bodies decide what is most worthy of being reported on. And it's sort of this domino effect of, of what it is. As part of discourse analysis, I was looking into all of these things to understand how, um, you know, systems and structures form norms, right? This normative way of operating. So that's something to think about. If we stay focused on the, on the cant of things, right? And, and we miss out on the meaning if we don't adhere to and really honor our emotions first. So the friend that called was um, quite upset and it was just a moment. This is a very, this, this was a friend who's quite strong. Um, and I, I found that talking to her was illuminating because you know, when you have those, the strong friends who call you and you're like, whoa, this is affecting you too. It's a reminder that the reactions that we have to the world are not things that we need saving from, right? It's indicative of the deep meaning that we have and that we've connected and associated to everything around us. So in those moments, let the emotions flow, yes, but then don't forget to pull back and ask, why is that so important to me? Why is that so important to me? Am I afraid of losing something? Am I afraid of people being affected in my life and how much I love them and, and how I want them to be okay? How, how is all of this coming together for me and for them too, right? So it's looking back and looking at the meaning that we make of things, the meaning that we pour into things. 
things don't happen because we're bad things just happen we decide to make them bad based on how we we view ourselves and how we view our ability to respond to them so are you anchored in your can or are you anchored in your can't because that that is part of this idea of salvation that is your creative capacity that is your creative uh, you know power i think that um the real point that I, I wanted to emphasize with this particular lesson was our ability to respond and also understanding that, you know, of angels and water wings. I thought about, you know, how how here in this life, our perspective is the water wings and we see these beautiful, what we don't realize is that we actually have these like wings of angels around us. We have these little water wings that we learn to swim with. I think some people might call them swimmies or floaties, right? But we have these little things it's just because we're it's the beginner's mind on the one hand but it's also an equal part um, equal part here that we're learning how to fly we're learning how to fly and i feel like if we spend a lifetime viewing it through those lenses as opposed to spending a lifetime trying to atone for something that we didn't come here doing we didn't come here bad you didn't come here bad you really didn't you came here so light you came here full of so much light. Oh my God, so much light. Um, that is your lesson for today. There's no creative spark because this is long enough and I don't even know that I'm going to be editing that much of this because it was all stream of consciousness despite a wealth of notes. It just, <laughs> um, yeah, so... On that note, my darlings, <laughs> if this resonated, please like and subscribe. It helps me to continue to grow this channel. Uh, and, you know, if if you are already part of the channel, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time here. I have so much, uh, you know, respect and gratitude for all of you. So thank you. In respect, even if you're like, hell no, and don't want to subscribe, I respect that too. Um, so on that note, wherever this finds you on the time-space continuum, morning, afternoon, or night, I hope it finds you very well, my friends. Take care.